I just wanted to tell you a little story, and I'm going to do it in English. That's my mother tongue, um, and language is power. I've been trying to translate the word ruya over to uh, English. We don't seem to have the concept. Um, I said, is it some kind of fish? No, no, it's a strange bird that goes, cup, 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 but it's used as a pejorative term for women, especially older women. So all I know is, is we're trying to reclaim um, the strange witch women who um, have always been thrown aside in our society. And all I wanted to do was share with you um, the three roya that I've known in my life. And when I was young, girl, and <laughs> obsessed with things that are no longer important, I despised these women, my aunt, my mother and my grandmother, of course. I despised the way that they had succumbed to gravity, that their faces, they all, they all seemed to look like Churchill. I despised the way their breasts hung. I despised the age. I despised the way they smelled. I despised the way particularly these three women didn't seem to give a fuck. Here's an example. My mother is from the gutter and so am I. We lived in a council house in, a, in an area of London called Notting Hill Gate. Make no mistake, we lived there before it got famous, before it was overrun with media whores and wankers. So what you've got in Notting Hill now is these housing trust apartments, which are very poor people live in, poor and working class people live in, next to extremely expensive apartments that people like Madonna move into. And I'll never forget, I cringed with embarrassment the first time I understood my mother was a roya. We were going into our house and there was an estate agent who was an Eindom's meddler who was showing this yuppie fuck couple up the stairs next door and they looked over into our front garden which was full of crap of course and they looked over with disgust and my mother turned and she's uh, shorter than Ibsen she's about this high and she just said that's right you cunts you're going to move in next door to the lumpen proletariat. Get fucking used to it. And walked in. They looked, and I was really embarrassed. That's right, you cunt. I thought, she really had bone in her nose, and I hated her for her vulgarity and her need to be the center of attention. <clears throat> I'll skip over my aunt. Um, because uh, it's a long story and I'm, it's, it's a good one, but um, I want to, I want to, I want to go to my grandmother. Another example of Odoya, and I was embarrassed when I first <coughs> heard this. My my mother was raised in um, Austria in uh, 1929. She was born, so her childhood was um, under Hitler occupation. We were a working class family and a communist to boot and very poor. And people always said, why on earth didn't your family move from Vienna when Hitler came to power? And my mother, in true royal fashion, said, because we were fucking poor. The only people who could leave Germany and Austria at the time were people who had money. But if you had to leave this country right now because the fascists had taken over, where would you go? Could you pack up all your stuff and buy an apartment somewhere else? And they couldn't go anywhere. The only thing they could do was a passive resistance. And this was the great story of my small, dumpy, Churchill-like looking Russian grandmother. When the Hitler Jugend, and this is true, this is true, everything I say is true. When the Hitler Jugend, the Hitler Youth, came knocking on the door, as they did, because they were clever, man. They knew what they were doing. Min Frau Pavlik, we have a fantastic summer camp. You're poor. We have 
fresh air and exercise out in the Vienna woods for your child. Good food, shoes, all sorts of things. Come, send your child to the Hitlerjugend summer camp, and many people did. And my grandmother said, fuck off, and closed the door. Hitlerjugend, hit fuck off, and closed the door. <laughs> We might find that easy to do and say, here we are in Norway, we have it so, so good, don't we? But back in the day, you know, it weren't so easy to say, fuck off to the Hitler youth and close the door. And I despised these women for swearing. And I despised these women for being embarrassing. I found that embarrassing that they, she said, fuck off to the Hitler youth. And I don't, how can you be embarrassed by saying, fuck off to a Nazi? That's really interesting. <laughs> Because I've gotten not older because age is relative, strange thing, it's very linear. I've gotten wiser, I've gotten a little bit more experience. And, and as I've done so, what extraordinary women, in a time when there wasn't the kind of leak of feeling we had, in a time when all women got smacked by men and raped, just normal. Your husband would come home and smack you. That was part of the course. They took it. And yet still my mother could say, that's right, you're living next door to the lumpen proletariat, the great unwashed. Get used to it. That pride, that incredible left-wing pride. So this is a hula to um, those wonderful witch women. The joya. <laughs> Because one day, most of us will be, and I think also dudes, guys, you know, you kind of get thrown on the heap as well. And once, once we screech towards menopause and we dry up and we're no longer useful to society, when doctors say things like, you've got cancer, let's remove your breast. I don't want to have my breast removed. But <laughs> really, Mrs. Pendry, you're over 50, you don't have any need for it anymore. That's true. That's when we um, used to take just a little bit of pride in the hanging flesh and the incredible sense of humour that comes from these wonderful, wonderful women. I don't think we could have a festival like this in, um, in England. That's why I live in Norway. It's a strange country, isn't it? But um, look at you all. That's why I live here. So, um, Without further, I'm sorry I'm babbling, I've had some, a, a strange week, so yes, you know what it is. Without further ado, I'm going to, I think it's fantastic, isn't it? Look at this. I'm going to go under the, there's something vaguely symbolically violent about it. I don't know what, what I'm cut, let's just, I'll do this for you. Whatever it is that you need cut out of your life, whatever it is you need to let go of. Okay? You think it now. Every one of you, so we've all got something. I know what I'm thinking. There it goes. It's holding on. It's tough, but hey. We are open for business.